Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla here with Ode to Abode, where I love to share my adventures in home education and homemaking with you guys. Today we're going to be looking at a flip through of Singapore Dimensions math. Let's get into it. So my, both of my daughters have been using Singapore Dimensions Math. I have a seven-year-old who's in level one. She's finishing up 1A and about to move into 1B. And then I have a four-year-old who's at the level K. So today we're going to be looking at the level 1A of Singapore Dimensions Math. I'm going to flip the camera around so I can show you guys what is inside this math program. So when you buy the Dimensions Math program from Singapore Math, your main part of your curriculum is going to be three books. You're going to have your teacher's guide, your workbook, and your textbook. And you'll notice that these say 1A. Each grade level is divided into two parts, A and B. So therefore, you'll have a total of six books for your whole grade level. You'll have a teacher's guide for the A part and B part, a workbook for A and a workbook for B, and a textbook for A and a textbook for B. So a total of six books. Okay, so I can't emphasize this enough. Your teacher's guide is essential. There are a lot of people who try to get this Dimensions Math program and they might only think that they need the workbook and or the textbook, but you're really missing out if you don't get the teacher's guide. Each teacher's guide that you have is going to have a table of contents. Everything is color coded for you, which I really appreciate as someone who loves color-coded everything. Each chapter will be covering its own concept. For example, chapter four is covering subtraction, chapter six, addition to 20. And then you'll have lessons within that chapter that are building towards mastery of that concept. Additionally, each teacher's guide will lay out exactly all of the methodology and information that you need about how this curriculum works. What is the pedagogy of this curriculum? They move you from a concrete to a pictorial to an abstract in each math concept. What that basically means is that your concrete is going to be introducing the topic to your child in a very physical and easy to understand way Sometimes this will mean manipulatives. Sometimes this will mean hands-on activities or games, but you're basically getting the child to think about this concept, this new math concept with something concrete. And then you move to pictorial, which is using imagery to teach and reinforce the concept. Then you move to abstract. This is the most difficult part where they're taking everything that they've learned and they're applying it to more difficult advanced equations. So this goes into a lot more detail. I'm not going to go into all of this, but I highly recommend that when you get your teacher's guide, you really study this and this will help you a great deal as you're implementing this curriculum into your homeschool. They're going to lay out all of the things that you need. So they explain the purpose of the textbook and how it works, the purpose of the workbook and the teacher's guide, which is what we're looking at now. You also have an option to get test books. I don't have those to show you. At this point in our homeschool and for this grade level, I don't feel it's necessary to do additional testing. But if you feel it's necessary or if your state requires it, that is an option that you can get through this same company. They have separate books just for testing. And then also you have your online resources. Whether you buy the books from Singapore Math or not, you can get access to all of these online resources for free. So Blackline Masters, they have it divided up, of course, by grade level and then by lesson. And these are free printables that are at times required for the lessons and they definitely help with the hands-on element of this curriculum. So I wanted to go ahead and show you what the Blackline Masters is. 
Here on the website, you'll go to the Dimensions Program and Resources. And then you'll have the option to jump to a grade or scroll through them all. Let's jump to 1A. You can download all the Blackline Masters for the entire 1A book here. Or you can go by chapter here. And so for chapter 1, it will have all of the PDFs for you to print. And now back to the book. Now the Letters Home is meant for teachers who are actually using this in a classroom setting, so that won't apply if you're a homeschooler. This curriculum is designed to be used in the classroom, and so you'll notice that a lot of the elements and activities are geared towards larger groups of children. That's okay for us. It's pretty easy to adapt to using it at home. Just wanted to point that out. So if you're homeschooling, this letters home element will not apply to you. You will have material lists for each chapter and lesson so that you can prepare ahead of time. I wouldn't say that this is an open and go curriculum per se, but I also don't feel like it needs a lot of prep time. I would say maybe once a month or once every other month is when I'm looking at my Blackline Masters and I'm printing things and I'm getting my resources prepared for the next few concepts that we're gonna be covering. It's not a lot of prep on a day-to-day -day basis. So they'll also have activities included. This page is gonna show you how to use your teacher's guide. One thing that I do think is pretty important to point out is this is kind of your general layout for each of your chapters. You'll have a chapter opener, you'll have a think portion, learn, and then you have your do. And then they just kind of explain a little bit, gives you ideas of questions that you can ask or phrases that you can use to get them to draw the correct conclusions on their own. We're developing critical thinking here and that's an aspect of this curriculum that I really do like. We also have a key for some symbols. So a circle is going to mean that it's a foundational activity. A triangle means on-level activities. And then a star is going to be an activity that's more challenging. Now we move on to our scope and sequence. This shows you what every single grade level covers from PK all the way to 5B. So this just kind of gives you an idea of where you're headed, everything that your child is going to learn in that amount of time. So since we are looking at 1A, let's just do a quick overview of what you're gonna be learning with your child in 1A. They're gonna be learning their numbers to 10, practicing that. They're gonna be learning number bonds, addition facts, subtraction facts. Then they're gonna be practicing numbers to 20, addition facts to 20, subtraction within 20, shapes, and ordinal numbers. Singapore math does circle back. It does spiral. Everything is sequential and kind of builds off of each other. It is a mastery curriculum, meaning that when they master one thing, they move on to another. But for certain core foundational things, they are going to be circling back in a spiral to make sure that they review it and really get that concept down. I really appreciate that it's both mastery and a spiral. I love that how it combines the two. So now I'm gonna show you guys a sample lesson and I'm actually just picked the lesson that we are about to start. So this is chapter seven, subtraction within 20. It's going to give you a layout of everything that's covered in this chapter, as well as a number of suggested class periods. So for a homeschooler, if you wanted to look at this as it's going to take us six days to finish this chapter, you could do that. Now, for me personally, I tend to stretch a lesson over two or three days. So this is going to take us a couple of weeks to finish this one chapter. So we tend to be a little bit slower. They're gonna tell you all of the things that your students are going to learn in this chapter, as well as how that builds off of what they already know. 
they're gonna give you a list of materials that you need to teach this chapter. Most of the time, these lists are just regular items that you're already gonna have around your house. Very rarely is it something that you're gonna have to purchase. In addition, they're going to have a list from Blackline Masters. Again, this is their printables. So if you wanted to, as you're starting this chapter, you could just go ahead and print all of this in advance. I don't do it that way. I typically wait until I really see that we need it. There's a few basic things that I already have printed. So I already have the double 10 frames printed and we've gotten a lot of use out of that. But I don't like to have a bunch of paper, a bunch of things printed. I don't have a laminator. So I really try to conserve how much paper little bits and pieces we have. And I will only use what I feel is really necessary to teach the lesson or that my kids will really enjoy. Granted, this is 1A math. At this point, my daughter finds it pretty easy. If we find that we're having a little bit more of a struggle as we get to later grade levels that are more difficult, I might be relying on these games and activities a lot more, and I'm so happy that they are included. Also, for each chapter, you will get a list of books. I love this. I think it is so nice and refreshing that even in a math curriculum, they know the importance of good literature. This would be great for your library visit to go ahead and pick these up as you're starting a new math concept, a new chapter. You have some books to reinforce that. And then our letters home, again, not applicable for homeschoolers. Also in each chapter, you'll have a place for notes. I haven't used these yet, but I think it's cool that they've included them. Okay, so now that we're starting the chapter, you're gonna have your chapter opener. We talked about that when we were looking at the table of contents. So your chapter opener is going to be in your textbook. Now they'll have a copy of the picture here in your teacher's guide, as well as a quick list of the answers. So in this case, it says count objects and tell subtraction stories. So in our picture, we have a total of 15 seagulls, we have eight seagulls standing and seven flying. So you could say 15 minus seven equals eight, that kind of thing. So you would do your chapter opener together. You would do your activity together. And then you have your first lesson in the chapter. So they'll give you the objective of lesson one. What are you gonna be learning in lesson one? What materials do you need? They have that here for you. Then we have our think problem. So in this case, this is kind of another hands-on activity that they're doing with 10 frames and counters. It gives you the page number. So here's our corresponding page in our textbook. Your think problem is the top of this page and then you have your learn problem on the second part of the page. So just to show you what that looks like, here is my double 10 frame that I've printed from Blackline Masters. This is what we use. I put it in a protective sleeve. So in this case, we'd be using counters and this printed double 10 frame to work out the problems that are on the textbook page. So you have the hands-on manipulatives as well as the pictures and words explaining what's going on. And in red here, you'll notice that it gives you the answers as well to these word problems. Now, something I wanna note, our textbook, I don't use it as a consumable, meaning my daughter doesn't write in the textbook. Now we move on to the do portion of lesson. This is still lesson one. We have two more pages in our textbook. We have this page, see it says do. And then we have this page. So again, my daughter's not actually writing in this. We're either working through it together verbally or she's using a separate piece of paper to work out these equations. Notice at the bottom of this page on the textbook, there is a pencil here. And here is the corresponding pencil in the textbook. 
What that means is you have a workbook exercise. So this is where your workbook comes in. You're gonna go to page 117 in this case. Now we have our consumable workbook. It has perforated pages that you can tear out. And in the first grade level, it's in black and white. Previous levels, it's still in color. This is where your student or your child is actually going to be writing in the workbook and working out these problems. These are where they practice all the skills that they've learned with our activities and our pictorial lessons. At the end of the lesson, before lesson two, we have additional activities. And then we also have our star activity. This is our challenging activity where you would have fill in the blank equations that are much more complex, like 17 minus nine equals one plus blank. And then you also have one more workbook page and that totally rounds out lesson one. So as you can see, that is a lot to do in one day. So don't feel like one lesson equals one day of work. It might take you two or three days to get through one lesson and that is perfectly fine. It might take you longer than that. So that is just one example of what a lesson can look like with Dimensions Math. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, I hope that you enjoyed looking at Singapore Dimensions Math Level 1 with me. If you enjoy videos like this, I hope you'll consider subscribing and turning on that notifications bell so that you can see when I upload more videos like this. Hope you'll consider giving it a thumbs up and tell your friends about us. I'll see you in the next video.